Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're learning Maseches Nedarim Dabches. We're starting on the very bottom line of Zion and Mibes, the last few words. We have already been learning a couple of Memras, a couple of Amoraic statements from Rav Gidal Amor Rav. Remember, Rav is, of course, the early Amor. So this is very, very early in the Amor, really the beginning. And let's get started with a new Memra right now. Rav Gidal Amor Rav. Uh, how do we know that a person is allowed to make a shvua about the fact that they're going to do a mitzvah? I hereby make a neder to put on tefillin in the morning. So says the Gemara, what's the raya? The raya is David HaMelech. I made a promise and I'm going to keep the laws that you've given me. Asks the Gemara, <clears throat> and this is a fundamental idea throughout uh, the concept of nedarim. What do you mean you're taking a nether? There's a pasuk in Chumash that's mechaev you to put that on. What does that mean? And this nether that we're talking about, if in fact it's a real nether, then if you skip tefillin that next day, not only were you mevatel the mitzvah saseh of tefillin, but you're chayev in all of the onshin of nether. So how is that even possible? The Gemara asks. And the Gemara responds, you're right. It's actually not a formal nether. What Rav, Rav Gidal Amarab was talking about was El HaKamash Man Desharle Le'inish Lezruzein Nafshe. He can do this, but only in as much as it motivates him. Not, it's not a full neder. Like you can say to yourself, uh, I hereby uh, commit to putting on tefillin, uh, you know, more with uh, just to make sure that I actually do it tomorrow. You force your hand, but it's not a full neder. You're allowed to do it, but it's not a proper neder. It's just a uh, cajoling. It's cajoling yourself. It's just making sure it's motivating. And in a similar way, says the Gemara, the Amar of Gidal Amarab, the second statement for the day, Haomer Ashkim Ve'eshna Perikze, a person who says, I'm going to get early, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to learn this Perik, I'm going to learn some Mishnayas, some Gemara, or Eshna Masechta Zu, or I'm going to get up and I'm going to learn this Masechta. Neder Gadol Nadar Lelokei Yisrael. That's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful thing to say in front of a Kodesh Baruch If you get up early to learn, which many of you do, uh, and the Gemara should also add here, and if you stay up to learn, whatever it is, the Gemara says, that is Neder Gadol Nadar Lelokei Yisrael. Asks the Gemara the same question over here that it asked just a moment ago against Rav Gidol Amarav. Ba'ala Mushba'va Omeid. Talmud Torah is uh, not up to you. Where we are, we are subjects. Our job is to do what a Kodesh Baruch Hu tells us. In fact, <clears throat> the Mishnayis and Pirkei Avos tell us that if a person starts to feel like a Baal Gaiba when they're learning, says the, Mish the Mishnah, L'kach nivra. You're not, you're, you've totally missed it. You feel so chashiv. This is why you exist. <laughs> if you feel like a Baal Gaiba, you've totally missed the whole point of creation. It's just to learn Torah and to be Marba Kvod Shemayim. So says the Gemara, I don't understand. How can you make a Shvua of Ashkin Ve'eshna Perek Zeh? Ve'ein Shvua Chala Al Shvua. We already have a Shvua with the Kaddish Baruch Hu to learn. Now you're going to tell me that you're going to have another Shvua to learn? Same question as before, effectively. Although the language here is a little bit stronger. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm saying the question is stronger. We're, we're asking, yeah, correct. We're saying the same thing, but it flips sides of the coin. Here, the Gemara is saying, the mitzvah to learn is referred to as a pact between us and a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And now you're making a shvua on top of a shvua. How is that allowed? Is that even possible? So the Gemara says, you know, every once in a while, uh, the people don't like to learn that much. It says the Gemara, wait one second before we get to the answer. My Kamashman, what do you want to say? You want to give the same answer we gave five lines ago in the previous case? You can't do that. We learned that on the top of the page in the first Rav Gidl. So what type of Shvua are we taking over here? Says the Gemara, since technically speaking, a person who's really not interested in learning, but they, are, they go to Shachris, Mincha, and Marv, you're Yotze, the mitzvah of Talmud Torah by saying, Kriyash Maba Boker and Kriyash Maba Erev. You're Yotze. So what's the Shvuah you're making? I'm going beyond the minimums. That's it. That's fine. The Shvuah that we have with the Kodesh Baruch Hu for Talmud Torah is Shema, is Kriyash Shema, morning and night. Here, what we're saying is, beyond that, I hereby take a Shvuah that I'm going to get up in the mornings and learn. That's totally appropriate. Mishum Hachi, Chayel Shvuah Alei. Therefore, in this case, the Shvuah is Chal. Unlike in the previous case, 
where we said it's just to cajole, just to motivate, light a fire under your seat. It's really not a neder, and there's no onshin for the neder that you violate. Here, that's not true. Here, if a person says, Ashkim, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to learn, and you make a neder, hare alai, whatever the language is, or a yad of, to start weaving things together, you make a yad of Talmud Torah to say, I'm going to, okay? So then says the Gemara that that is a real shavuot. That's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, super careful. Not only that, but it's like it's it's, it's not only that. It's also squatters' rights. Even if you just do it a few times, you know. But if the squatter lives there for long enough, it's his. If you do it a few times, you have to say everything is plain. Yeah, it's a big problem. These are both real good. The first one? Yeah. How would how, how? There's no ocean. It's just a Zruzay Asatmo. So making difference with Torah and the Muslim. So oh, that's a separate mitzvah do Raisa. Well we're saying as opposed to a big one where it's not a real one, this one is a real one. It's a real one because the cases are not the same. In the first case, we're talking about putting on tefillin, and I make a shvu about tefillin. In the second case, we're talking about Talmud Torah, but there's a minimum of Talmud Torah, and then there's additional. You're allowed to make a shvu on additional Talmud Torah. That's what the Gemara says. Since you could have exempted yourself with the mitzvah of Talmud Torah simply by saying Kriyash Mashachris and Arbis, then getting up in the morning is really extra, quote unquote, right? It's extra learning as it relates to the minimums of Shema. There you can make a shvua, and there the onshin of shvua archal. That's what I was saying. In the first case of Rabbi, Rabbi Gidol Marav, there's no onshin. It's a, it's not really a nether. It's some kind of a motivator. I don't know what to call it. It's, it's not a regular nether because there's no onshin. But here it really is chal because you're not talking about the minimums. You're saying I'm adding to the minimums, and that's a, that's fine. Next, third Rabbi Gidol Marav for the day. Omer Rabbi Gidol Marav halfway down on Ches Medalah. You and I decide we're going to get up early and we're going to learn a parak of uh, Mishnahis together, a parak of Gemara. The guy who opened his mouth to say Nashkim that we should get up, he should get there first. Says the Gemara, how do we know? From Sefer Yechezkel. But Yomer Eli, Yechezkel reports that Hashem said to him, what did Hashem say to Yechezkel? Kum Go out to the Bika, go out to the valley, and you and I are going to have a conversation there. And then what happened? Vaitzei la bika. Yecheskel says that he went out to the bika. Hashem beat him to the punch. Vehinei, vehinei sham kavod Hashem omed. So what do we see? Hashem called the meeting. Hashem got there first. Same as with us. If we decide, if I'm the, if I'm the initiator, I'm the instigator, I'm the one who initiates the dialogue. Let's have a charusa. Then I, I really need to be there first. That's modeling after a kodesh baruch Hu. That's what happened with him in Yecheskel. Let's get into some fascinating halachic gemaras. Who knew that dreams could be real? We learned brachas nunzai and all the crazy dreams about the weed and the teeth and all the other weird things. That, this is halacha lemaisa. And says the Gemara, Amar of Yosef, nidu b'chalom. Let's say that in your dream, someone was nidu, someone uh, made a neder against you. They, they made a shvu against you. Sarach yud b'nei adam lahatir lo. And when you wake up, you need 10 people to, uh, to be matir. So the Mephorshim here explain the reason why we need 10 people is because th- since the chalom is a shlichus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then you need a Kodesh Baruch Hu to be there to be matur your neder, and we get the Shechina with 10 people. So therefore, when you wake up, oh shoot, bad dream, I need to get 10 people together because they were menada me in my dream. Halacha <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. It's quoted in, uh, this is quoted in Shulchan Aruch. It says the Gemara, only though, Behu detanu hilchasa. The people who are going to redeem you from this when you're awake, they have to be people who learn halacha. Aval masnu tanu. If they learn mishnayis but they don't learn halacha, lo, then they're insufficient. You need dayanim. You need people who are talmidei chacham. Be leka detanu hilchasa. If there is nobody who is who is proficient in halacha, afilu masnu tanu. Then it could even be someone who learns mishnayis but doesn't learn. Uh, but, but doesn't yeah. learn halacha, that's still fine. Be leka, but if there's mamish, no one, then the Gemara's eight says as follows. Lezel, you should go. Veleseva parosha strachim. You should go and sit by the by the busy corner where there's a lot of people. Let's say uh, two in Sacramento. Pick your corner in the neighborhood, whatever it is. And then, <laughs> what'd you say? Maybe uh, Kedzi in two weeks. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> Kedzi's a little more dangerous this week. Yeah. Sit off the corner. The drivers are a little crazy. The yoyv shlama lebei, uh, lebei yud. And you should give Shalom Aleichem to 10 people. Until you find 10 people, apparently just getting the brach of Shalom Aleichem from someone protects you. 
That's what is implied in the Gemara, because it's Shlama the Bayud. That's what the Gemara says that it's going to protect you until that time. Okay, says the Gemara. <coughs> what? Correct, but not for these purposes. That's for the Simcha Shal Mitzvah. That's a, for a different reason that we do that. But here, the Gemara is saying that he needed to he needed to have some protection. So he, that's what he did. He got Shalom Aleichem. So if you're having a rough day, you're having a rough go, make sure to say Shalom Aleichem to everyone in Shul. Uh, just, uh, it's a good, a little, a meaningful, it's not even a shtick. It's not even a skula. It's just the way it works. You're getting direct brachos from people. I, I, I wonder if somebody else has a dream that, that, that you were putting in either you have to worry about the Gemara doesn't speak about that iteration. I don't know. You'd need re, you'd need Rishonim on that. We're going to see a couple more a couple more applications, but not that one. The Gemara then says Amrle Ravino the Ravashi. Ravino was a Talmud of Ravashi. He was he was uh, he was deferential, and he said Yoda man shamte mahu delishrile. If I know the guy who put me into chera in my dream, can I just go over to him to be matir? Says the Gemara, Amarle Lishmute Shavu Ashliach. This guy was definitely in your dream, at least, was, was considered by a Kodesh Baruch Hu to be good enough to be a Shaliach to make you into a, a Barshamta. However, the Mishrele Lo Habishliach, but he has no Rishos here because it's they're on different planes. You have one in the dream place and one in the in, uh, you know terra firma. So they're really not the same messengers. Yeah, they're not the same plane. It's again, we're we're talking about it's very hard to really. But we have like a lamb de because it's in a dream. So then, yes, you're a shliach, but it's not really shlichus. And uh, when when I wake up, I'll be like, oh, by the way, you know, you put me into a cherem while I was sleeping. Can you be matir? The Gemara says, no, you're not allowed to do that. Says the Gemara, Amar le Rav Acha le Ravashi, Shamte vishsharu le bechal mai. Let's say that not only did you put me into Shamta in my dream, but you also took me out of the Shamta in my dream. You put me into cherem, and then right away you took me out of cherem. Does that work? Just like it's impossible when you have a lot of grain, it's impossible for there not to be some impurities with some with some hay or some other en entities that don't belong in the grain, says the Gemara on the top of Chesimid Beis, It's also impossible for a dream to not have some things in it that are batel. So really what's happening here in the Gemara is that we had two parts to the dream and we analyze it halachically. Part one of the dream is that a person was put into Shamta. They were put into Cherem. Part two of the dream is that they were removed. But the Gemara says that some dreams have Batala in them. All dreams have Batala in them. But we don't know if all of it was Batala or if some of it was Batala. So al Safek, when it comes to having been put in Shamta, we're Choshesh. And we say, yeah, you really were put in Shamta. But when it comes to the dream where he removes you from Shamta, maybe that was the Batala. We don't know. So therefore, when you wake up, you still need to get a, to get a Heter, to get out of the Shamta. The guy, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, the Mafari, the Mafari here, the Mafari writes like, like I just explained, Vishema that the, the side of him having gotten the, the header. But you're asking, what if you dreamt for four seconds? The the, the four seconds was Stan Gertz put me in Tacher. That's an answer. You know what I'm saying? So I, it sounds like we're both, because otherwise it should work both ways. If you can assume harm the tailor applied to the release, then you can also one or the other. No, but there's the answer is no, because the, the the release is a kula and the right. and the setup is a khumra. We're mocking the tailor. We're we're machmer on both ends, right? But that doesn't answer his. I mean, I hear you, but that doesn't answer his question. He's saying, what if, in theory, if you can have a dream that's mom? Right, but obviously, you know, right. What? I, mean, I still hear. I still hear the question. I hear. I hear your answer. Okay. The Gemara says that Ravina Havale Nidra Lidibisu. His wife had made a particular nether. <laughs> we learned in, well, six subas. I'm not sure. I think it was Subas that um, that not every neder that a woman makes is subject to her husband's hafara. There are some nedarim that are private or irrelevant of the husband. He doesn't always have the latitude to remove a neder. So this woman had a neder, and also lekame de Ravashi. Already we see the deference again because Ravina was uh, was younger. Amarle, 
Baal, can a husband, namely, can I, Ravina says, can I be a messenger of contrition for my wife's nether? She made a nether and she feels bad about it. And that's how you get out of it anyways. I, if, if had I known how hard it would have been, I never would have done it. Had I know how expensive it would have been. Had I known how tiring it would have been. So says the Gemara, Amar Lei, in. Ravashi responds <laughs> to Ravina and says that if the Bezdin's gathered already, Mechanfin is to be gathered. If there is already three people in front of you in, we'll let that go. It's a Kula anyways, because he's he's not her. He's just representing her. So if the three of the Dayanam are already sitting there, we'll allow for him to go to that Bezdin. However, Ilolo, but if the Bezdin is not already congregated, you're not allowed. Says the Gemara five lines down on Chesmet Bey's Shmami Natsas. We're going to be going to the last word on the page. As you can see, tomorrow we'll be starting with a fresh Mishnah. Uh, yeah, no, very close though. And we just missed the Hilula. I was out of town the day that was, whatever day I was gone was the day of the Hilula, Monday, I think. Okay, Shmami Notzlas. We learned three things from this little story. Number one, Shmami no Baal Nasesh Rotas Ishto. A husband is allowed to be a messenger for a wife's contrition. She took a nether upon herself and she feels bad about it. We are allowed to do Ataras Nadarim on behalf of our spouses. But I do it every year. I always have in mind for your spouses. No problem at all. You're allowed to do that. She should know that you're doing that for her. She should. That's a Shaila in post game. If she doesn't even know you're doing the Hafara for her, can her complete lack of dust? Had she known, she would have given dust, but she didn't say anything. So what's the halachic assumption of nothing? <laughs> if she says nothing because you know you didn't talk about it, does it count? So, yeah, yeah. It's your daughter. That's the pasuk in Chumash. Just like you can be made for a wife's nether, you can be made for a daughter's nether. Because the the Mefarshim here explained that that Ravashi was saying to Ravina, "I'll allow you to be the messenger, provided that they're already gathered, because this is a kula already. But for you to now have to go gather the bezdin is too far. And not that anything changes in the mechanics of the hafara, because nothing changes in the mechanics." But Ravashi's like, I'll let you do it under this circumstance. He kind of gave like some, some limit in order to make sure that things don't get out of hand. So that's the first Shmamina, and this is very halachal maisa. The second, the Shmamina, lo shari the mishre nidra ba'asra de rabbe, that Ravina wasn't allowed to, uh, to pask in this shayla in front of his Rebbe. He cannot be made for neder if his Rebbe's in town. That's why he went to his Rebbe. And what was his shayla? Am I the husband? He didn't say, am I Ravina? The Tamar Chacham he said, no, as a husband, am I allowed? And he said, oh, if Mechanfin, then yes. If not Mechanfin, then no. Bishmami, no. And the third thing that we learned is, Ki uh, Mechanfin Shapir Dami. When do we do Ataras Nadarim? When everyone's in Shul. They're Mechanfin already. But Lemaisa, let's say, this, is, this would be an application of this Gemara. Let's say that um, out of the blue, my wife says to me, I made a Nadar. Can you please go be made, be made for Nadar for me? And I go to Shul and there's only two people there. Am I allowed to go get a third and be made for neder? That would be enough kamina from this gemara. The halacha seems to not be that way. It seems to be that it's only when mechanfin. After a regular shacharis, if there's three Jews, no problem. That's why tarsh nadarim works for our spouses in, in, in abstentia, because we're, we're doing exactly what this gemara says. But if you walk into the base medrash to find three people and no one's there, then the chori, you're not allowed to be made for neder, according to Ravashi. That would be a, that would be a big chumrah. Not a big chumrah, but it would be a chumrah. Okay, third of the way down. Bishamta afilu be'asra derabe. And one in regards to Shamta, that we were talking about a neder. Remember the case of Ravina's wife is that when in regards to a neder, those were all the halachos. But what about a Shamta when it comes to a cherem? That Ravina could have even done that in front of his Rebbe. And the Mepharshim here explained that we don't want people to be in cherem at all. We want that to be a very limited scope. By nedarim, a neder sometimes is a good thing. We just saw that on the previous page. Not every neder should be annulled. But in the event that there's shamta, we really do want to try and get out of that uh, shamta as, as quickly as possible. And therefore, Ravina, even in front of Ravashi, would have allowed to been Mayfair a shamta to get a woman or to get anybody out of an excommunication. Even one person, but that person should be an expert, he is allowed to be matir a shamta to undo an excommunication. Long names here. Amar of Shimon Barzvid. Amar of Yitzchak bar Tabla, Amar of Chia Aricha, Debeir of Acha, Amar of Zera, Amar of Elazar, Amar of Bichanina, Amar of Mesha, Mishmed of Yehuda bar Eli. That's basically almost every generation of Amorim in backwards order. It's incredible. And when you look at this, I, I'm sorry, as someone who who gives a daf yomi share, I love seeing these lines because they it's three lines that you don't have to work hard on when you're preparing. So it's like it's exciting for me. But I know, man. No, but then the idealism kicks in after after. After the Yitzhahara finishes with me, then, then I think about it. Well, yeah, I'm sure you were, yeah, yeah. 
So here, this is beautiful because you don't see this too often where you see something that permeated the, all of the generations of the Amorim. We know historically speaking that there were uh, maybe eight, six to eight generations of Amorim. And uh, here, this is, this is beautiful because you're seeing how far this carried into the Amorim and they could reverse it back to Rabbi Yehuda Bar Ilan. What did they say? My dechsiv, what does the Pasuk mean when it says yireshimi, that we will shine for them, the, the sun will shine for them, those who fear my name, skip the parentheses. Elu b'nei adam yirein shem These are people who are fearful to not say Hashem's name in vain. That's all of us. That's all of us. We don't like saying Hashem's name in vain. And even when we do, Rahman al-Islam, we say, Baruch Shem Kavod Ma'chusol When does this happen for me? Almost every year on Cholomot. Because I put on tefillin with al My uh, father, my father didn't have a, a minna growing up on this because he's a Baal Tshuva. Didn't came from when my oldest brother was was starting school, so some some fifty years ago, forty years ago, whatever it is. So the mice, the post came right that in a case like that, if your parent is a Baal Tshuva, then you as a ben Torah are allowed to select. It's a very rare profile. You're allowed to select a mainstream shita in regards to areas of dispute. So in speaking with Rabbi Friedman and Rabbi Robinson, uh, it became clear that the that a, a very reasonable halachic approach, a mainstream approach, is to put on tefillin because is it chol or is it moed, but to do so without a bracha. Invariably, I will find myself asher ki the shan of a mitzvah sivanu, and then I have to hope that I didn't say birchos Torah yet, which never happens because I <laughs> because of daviomi. So I usually I'm like. Oh. That's a good shayla. Is it better to put on tefillin with a suffix with a vaday of you making a brach? <laughs> it's a terrible shayla. How old is your reference? I'm pretty bad, but at least there, there's a sheet of the gruff. That's like at least uh, I'm pretty bad. And I, of course, I make the announcement if I'm running this. Dinner, make sure not to make a. You don't need to. Yeah. No, does he wear tefillin? I have no idea. I should ask him. We must well, obviously, obviously you're both kind of the same way. clearly not, but that's not even there's no you don't have to create a Karish family Masori, you don't have no, to do no, that. No, no, yeah, it's just Ben Achar Ben. It could be the case that my father doesn't work for, and that's Mutter Mutter. Like nah. <laughs> the truth is that if you learn the Mari Makomos and Yoradea, the Shah writes about waiting six hours that if you really do have a choice he writes this flowery language of umishi yeshbo reach torah will wait six hours and whatever six hours means he doesn't mean six hours whatever your shita of six hours is so three is a sheet of the pre chadash that was a, it's a german posek that's a quote in the in the footnotes on the side of the shulchan it's a shita it's a shita but if you're not a yak then it's a uh, it's a bit uh, I was talking to someone this week, uh, a nameless someone, because I think this is ridiculous. A nameless someone told me that he, the husband, he's a Tamil Chacham, he's Mamash Tamil Chacham, he, the husband, holds stark that you need to wait six hours. That's how he grew up. His wife is holding, and she, and she grew up in a Yekisha family. And she still keeps three hours. Oh, well, my, the children, it's going to be very confusing. Yeah, yeah. But that's at least a chumrah. <laughs> that's your, you want to be a machmir and call it a chumrah, no problem. You're being machmir and a minag. Okay, whatever. But uh, but this is not okay. It's not good for the kids. It's not. It's confusing. It's confusing. <laughs> and on the flip side, I have found uh, these shilas from students and when I was a Rebbe in Hill Torah, where the parents wait three hours. The kid learns the halacha that their parents are not yet because they, uh, they picked an easier minag. So I've asked Shilas over the years, one to Rabbi first, what should we do in a case like this? He said the kid should keep three hours until he leaves his parents' house, until he graduates high school, whatever goes to Yeshiva, and then he should start keeping six hours for the rest of his life. Well, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Because really, the, the, the whole idea by Basar B'chalav is it's all a minhag. Beyond the first hour, the Isser Darais of Basar B'chalav is mamish cooking the two together. That's extremely rare to experience that. You have to really... Can you own stock in Burger King, all those other shilas? If you just hold a piece of cheese and a piece of deli together and you make a shakal, that's an Isser Durabana. You're a Russia, but that's an Isser Durabana. But, that, but it, after the first hour of waiting, then if you were to have milk, 
after your hour of waiting for meat, then it's a, only quote unquote a minhag. So for example, nursing mothers whose milk supply will diminish if they don't eat certain foods that are milchik, mutter, that's fine. Once they break an hour, we try to keep an, a full hour because that's actually the Yisr Darabonim. So here you have a real minhag, a, a stark minhag in Klai Yisrael to wait. And Rabbi First is passing and tell him to wait three hours for the next decade. You know, it's unbelievable. It's a fascinating stuff. All right, so we're in the middle of darshaning this pasuk. Shemesh tzedek umerapeh. What does that pasuk mean? That the son of tzedakah will will heal. Very. Let, let's see what the Gemara says. Amar Abay Shmamin Acharga the Yome Mase. The dust of the daytime heals. You ever notice sometimes when it's like bright in a room, you see dust floating in the room. So when you're a little OCD, you start waving it away, even though we all know that it doesn't actually go anywhere, but we watch it swirl in front of us. The Gemara says those, those dust particles are healing. That's what the Gemara says. However, not everybody agrees to this understanding of the Pasuk. The last of the short lines on Ches and Beis, he has a totally different understanding of these Pesukim. The Omar, Ein Gehenem Olam Haba. Yikes, we need to understand what these words mean because it's a little uh, heretical to understand them al Pipashtus. This is Rav Shimon. It's Rav Shimon ben Lakish. Correct. Cor it's not even on Poshe Yisrael. This Gemara is more broad. This Gemara is Ein Gehenim Le'olam Haba. But the Ran here at the bottom of the page, three lines from the bottom. Huh? You what? That's what Ra the, the Ran's going to explain. The Ran's going to tell yeah. us what's going on. That doesn't mean that after a person dies that there's no that there's no Gehenim. For sure there's a Gehenim after a person dies. If he's in need of Gehenim, he gets it. However, says the Gemara, That's what the Gemara means. When we say that there's no Gehenim, that means that after Tchias HaMesim, then there's no Gehenna. That's what the Gemara means. Ella says the Gemara, back to the Gemara, four lines from the bottom. Ella, Kodesh Baruch Hu, Motzi Chama Min Artika. Kodesh Baruch Hu takes the sun out of its covering. Okay. A little homily. I'm sure there's some Kabbalistic, uh, I'm sure. I'm not really sure, but I'm guessing. <laughs> and says the Gemara, Tzadikim, when the sun comes out, what does this Pasuk mean? That Shemesh Tzadakam Umerape, Tzadikim Misrapin Ba. It'll heal you. It's vitamin D. You'll stand in the sun. If you're a tzaddik, you'll benefit from the sun. Urushayim nidonin ba. But the Rishayim, they are they are going to be judged by the sun. Shneemar, our Pasuk Vizarcha, Lachemi Re Shme Shemesh. And the Pasuk ends with Shemesh Tzedaka Merape. Velo od Elashemis Adnin. Not only will the tzaddikim heal from it, but they would even enjoy being in the sun. Shneemar Vyatsasem Ufishtam Keagle Marbek. That it'll be like um like calves, uh, like calves that are going out, uh, uh, going out of, of the bar. But what does it mean that the Rishayim are going to be judged by the sun? On that day, when it, when they go out into the sun, it's going to be like an oven. It's going to be roasting hot for them. Again, Gehenim is probably not temperature hot. I don't know what it is, but it's um, probably not a physical location, But because uh, we're talking about neshamas and not bodies. But that is what the Gemara says on this Pasuk. So Machlok is how to understand the Pasuk. We're going to stop right here. Mir Tashem will pick up tomorrow night with Daf Tess and Daf Yodah Wishing you all a beautiful night.